Good afternoon and welcome to another West Howe Community Enterprises cooking video. This week we're going to be making a tuna pasta bake and so I've got all of my ingredients ready and I'm going to make a start. Uh, for this recipe the ingredients list will be with the video um, but you're going to need um, some pasta. Um, I've got two tins of chopped tomatoes here as well. Um, salt, pepper, lots of cheese. Um, and an onion and then either three tins of tuna or if you're vegetarian like me then um, we're going to go for courgette and pepper and mushrooms right so the first thing that we need to do is preheat the oven because we are going to bake this and make it nice and creamy and get that cheese melting so we're going to preheat the oven to 200 degrees and then I'm going to put a low heat on a large pan on the hob and add a little bit of oil. And we're going to chop the onions and fry those off as the first step. So I'm just going to take off the outside. I've just got one medium um, white or brown onion. And I'm going to chop it quite small so that it mixes through the pasta. Depending on how juicy it is, it might make your eyes water a little bit. Okay, so let's get rid of all of that. usually find it easiest to do it in two halves like this. Okay. This should make about six portions, this recipe. Um, so Depending on how many people you've got in your household, you might want to keep some of it and have it another day. You can reheat this or you can also have it cold. It's quite nice to have cold for lunch. Maybe even with a bit of garlic bread on the side. There we go. So we've got, got our onion there chopped nice and small. And I'm going to add that to this pan. I'm going to let that fry in there for about four minutes just keeping an eye on it we want it to go soft and a little bit brown and while that's happening i'm just going to look at the instructions on the pasta um because we're going to pre-cook the pasta before we put it in with the bake um so the suggestion on my pasta is that it should simmer for about 10 to 12 minutes so what i'll do is put a pan of water on the stove now to let that boil um, and I'll cook the pasta but I'm not going to cook it completely I'm going to let it cook so that it's a bit soft but not completely soft as it would be if you wanted to eat it because the last bit of the cooking will happen in the oven where it will absorb all of the juices from the other ingredients so I'm going to get my pan and just get that boiling away ready for when we need it And a little bit of salt in the water there. Okay, so it's going to take a few minutes for that to come to a boil. And I'm just going to keep an eye on it because with an electric hob, things tend to take a while to heat up and then heat up all of a sudden. So I don't want that to boil over. Um, so that's all ready to go now. Um, and I'm going to now just do uh, the vegetable preparation. So depending on whether you're doing this as a tuna pasta bake or a vegetable pasta bake. If you're using tuna, you don't need to do any preparation because we're just going to chuck it in. But with the vegetables, we need to chop them up. So I'm going to cut up the courgette nice and small and give the mushrooms a wash and chop those up too and chop up the pepper. And I'm going to put you on pause while I do that. Okay, 
Okay, so the onions have been cooking for four minutes now and I've chopped all of my vegetables to go in. Um, again, this is just the optional um, vegetables. I'm going to pop those in with the onions now. And I'm also going to add some garlic. So I would put garlic in um, with the tuna recipe as well because it's just going to add some flavour to the whole thing. Um, the recipe suggests about half a teaspoon. It's totally up to you how garlicky you want this to be. I really like garlic, so I'm going to put a whole teaspoon in here. Give that a bit of a stir. And just let that fry for about another two minutes. You just want the garlic to cook through before we add anything else. And the other vegetables that I put in there just need to fry down a little bit. Um, while that's happening, we also need to grate our cheese. Now again, you might have bought pre-grated cheese, or like me, you might have a block. So I'm just gonna, whilst the vegetables cook, I'm just gonna grate all of this cheese um, because you can't have a pasta bake without a nice cheesy topping. So that's the next step. I'll put you on pause whilst I do that. Okay, so the onion and garlic and vegetables have been frying for about two minutes now. Everything's smelling good and the vegetables are starting to soften. So it's time to put in our tomatoes and other ingredients. So I'm going to put two tins of chopped tomatoes into here. And while we've been doing this, the water for the pasta has come to boil, which is brilliant. So we can pop the pasta on as well. Okay, let's give that a bit of a stir. Fantastic. Also going to put some mixed herbs in here just to bring out the flavours. Um, about a teaspoon of dried mixed herbs there. And stir those through as well. Right, so I'm going to pop the lid on that and leave that to simmer for about 15 minutes just to get a nice depth of flavour. And while that's happening, we need to pop pasta into the water. I've got some nice bubbles in there to show that it's boiling. And so we're gonna we're gonna cook the pasta. I'm going to go for about eight minutes and then I'm going to start to test it. And as I said, it needs to be softened, but you don't want it to be completely cooked. So a little bit firmer than you would normally want to have it to eat. Um, so we're going to put the timer on for eight minutes and then check the pasta. And I've got the cheese ready for the next stage. OK, so my timer's has just gone off to say that it's been eight minutes. So I'm going to check this pasta. Just been simmering away. Okay, so it's probably quite hard to demonstrate that. It's got a bit of flex in it and it has started to soften, but I think it needs a little bit longer. We want it to be almost at the point where we would eat it. So I'm gonna time again for two more minutes and just give that a little bit longer. Uh, but I'm also gonna stir the tomato mixture whilst I'm here as well, just to make sure that it's um, cooking all the way through and then nothing's sticking to the bottom of the pan. Oh, that smells really nice. Okay. Right, so I'll see you in another two minutes. Okay, so the pasta's had another two or three minutes and I think it might be done now. Let's have a look. Bit of a stir. Brilliant. Okay, so... Again, it's quite hard to demonstrate on the camera. Um, so it's got a nice amount of flex in there. It's not as soft as you would want it if you were going to eat it now, but it's it's definitely cooked about 90% of the way, which is exactly what we want. So I'm gonna turn off the heat on the pasta, and I'm also gonna turn off the heat on our tomato mix, which has cooked nicely and is smelling really good. 
So our next job is to drain the pasta out. I'm just going to do that over the sink. At this stage, um, if you're adding your tuna, then open up your cans and just drain out all of the water. Um, it will either be in some flour oil or in brine or in spring water. So definitely drain out any brine or spring water from the cans. If there's some flour oil, then I would drain as much of it as you can, but a little bit won't mind because it will just add to the flavour. Um, so. We're going to put everything into this one pan. Hopefully your pan is big enough for this. If it's not, I suggest devising it between two. So pop your tuna, if you have it, into your tomato mix. And then your lovely part cooked pasta. Just going to give that a stir to combine it all. It's easier to mix it in the pan than it is in the dish, but there is no one way to make a pasta bake. Okay. And also this is a good time to add some salt and pepper. Again, you will know how much you like pepper. I tend to put quite a bit. And a little bit of salt and give that a stir as well. So we have everything together in the pan ready to transfer into our baking, baking tray or casserole dish. Okay. Okay, so next you need your oven proof dish. And I'm going to spoon the mixture in using a slotted spoon if you have one. Depending on your tin tomato consistency, you might find that you want to leave behind a little bit of the liquid. So because the pasta needs to carry on cooking in the oven, we definitely don't want this to be a dry consistency. We need some of that tomato juice to soak up into the pasta as it cooks. But we also don't want it to be too soggy. So I'm just going to spoon it in and see how we're looking. Okay. I've seen some recipes for tuna pasta bake or vegetable pasta bake where they miss out the baking part. You don't have to bake this recipe. Obviously, you could just cook the pasta for longer. Um, but I think it tastes particularly good when it's been baked, when the cheese has been on top. Um, and also, if you were going to make a pasta without the baking step, then I would make a thicker sauce as well. So this is really designed to be baked. So there's a little bit of liquid from the tomato left in the bottom. Um, I'm going to use some of that so that, as I say, so it, it doesn't go dry. I'm just going to just going to pour that over the top. OK, so I think that's probably about right. You, you need it to be moist. It's a bit of a judgment call there. Um, but it's not it's not swimming in juice, so we're all good. So the final stage before we put this in the oven is to add your grated cheese. Another thing that you can do to make a crunchy topping is to put breadcrumbs on here as well. So if you feel as though you would enjoy breadcrumbs, then do add those as well. And the quantity of cheese is totally up to you. You can go for a really, really thick crust or just a smattering like I've done. Um, this is about 100 grams of cheese, like half of a medium sized block. So it's just enough to cover the top there, but go for whatever you think 
is your preference. So I've got this much cheese. And now our oven, which is preheated, will be up to temperature about 200 degrees. And I'm going to put this in the oven now for about 15 to 20 minutes. So what we want is for the top to be golden and for it to all just start to bubble nicely. Um, and we'll be able to see that the pasta's cooked as well. Um, and you'll get like little nice brown bits on the top there so that it's got a little bit of a crust to it, but we don't want it to burn. So I'm gonna pop this in the oven and set the timer again. I've put it on the shelf in the middle of the oven there. Um, okay. And timer. Okay, so I've set my timer for 15 minutes and then I'll check it and see if it needs any longer. See you then. Okay, so this is inside the oven where the pasta is looking pretty good and the cheese is looking pretty melty. It's been in there for 15 minutes, so I'm going to take it out and just see whether we think it's done or not. Okay, so I think that this needs a little bit longer. The cheese is really melty, but I want it to have that crispy top and the mixture has just started to bubble and it's starting to create that kind of lovely topping area. But I think I think we're going to go for a little bit longer. Um, so I'm going to set the timer for five more minutes and pop this back into the oven again. And I will see you then. Okay, so I had another five minutes with this in the oven and I'm glad that I did. It looks really good now. Um, so this has been in the oven for 20 minutes altogether and got this nice, nice melted and then crisp cheese topping, uh, which would be even more dramatic if you put a thicker layer of cheese on here. And then we can see that it's just bubbling away underneath here. I can actually hear it bubbling. Um, so you know that that's going to be piping hot. Um, and then really to serve that, you just want to scoop out, scoop it out. And I would usually eat this in a bowl uh, with maybe a little bit of garlic bread on the side, but however you like. And as I say, it's really nice to have it as a lunch. Um, you can keep this in the fridge for about three days. Um, just allow it to cool in your, um, in your separate containers. Let it cool for up to two hours before you put it um, in, the, in the fridge, because at the moment it's obviously piping hot. And then you should be able to keep this for about two to three days um, and have it again for a lunch or a dinner later on in the week. Okay, I'm gonna enjoy my pasta bake and I hope you do too, and I'll see you next week.